My name is James Bevel. I was born in rural Itabena, Mississippi on October 19, 1936. I grew up mostly in rural Floor County, Mississippi and in Cleveland, Ohio. After serving in the U.S. Navy, I attended the American Baptist Theological Seminary in Nashville, Tennessee. While I attended the seminary, I became involved with the student movement and participated in the Nashville sit-in movement along with other future civil rights leaders like Diane Nash, Marion Barry, and Bernard Lafayette. I was also a part of the Freedom Rides in 1961. After the riders were attacked in Alabama, the Congress of Racial Equality suspended the rides. Diane Nash and I urged CORE to continue the rides, and we recruited more riders to finish the rides. I was arrested for trying to desegregate the bus terminal in Jackson, Mississippi. While I was in the Jackson jail, Bernard Lafayette and I initiated the Mississippi Voting Rights Movement. At the time, we faced violent resistance and we were forced to regroup. Our efforts paid off in the long run and eventually paved the way for Freedom Summer in 1964. In 1962, I traveled to Atlanta to meet with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., a minister who was the head of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Dr. King and I reached an agreement about directing the SCLC. We led the organization as equals, agreeing to work until segregation was ended, African Americans had voting rights, and all children had access to a quality education. I became the Director of Direct Action and the Director of Nonviolent Education for the SCLC, and Dr. King was the chairman and the spokesperson. As a member of the SCLC, I organized several of the most influential events of the Civil Rights Movement. The first was the Birmingham Children's Crusade. As many adults were unwilling to take part in protests due to work obligations, many high school and college students volunteered to take part in the protest. I directed students, 50 at a time, to walk to City Hall to ask the mayor about segregation. Bull Connor, the city commissioner for public safety, ordered hoses and German Shepherd dogs be used on peaceful protesters. National and international media got a hold of pictures of the police using hoses and attack dogs on peacefully protesting children and caused an outrage. President Kennedy drafted a civil rights bill and Bull Connor was forced to leave his position in Birmingham. On February 16th, 1965, a protester named Jimmy Lee Jackson was shot dead by an Alabama state trooper while defending his mother from an attack. We were outraged that such a young man could be killed with such impunity. On March 7, 1965, the SELC and I decided to walk from the city of Selma to Montgomery to protest the injustice of his death and pressure Governor Wallace to support voting rights. When we reached the Edmund Pettus Bridge, we were attacked by Alabama state troopers. We were gassed and beaten by the police, and the federal government had to step in to protect us. But when we arrived in Montgomery on March 25th, 25,000 protesters had joined us in our fight. In 1966, we moved north and set our sights on Chicago. The SCLC and I started the Chicago Open Housing Movement. Our aim was to end slums in the city, create tenant unions, and to keep public housing safe and habitable for children. These protests provided a catalyst for the Fair Housing Act, which was passed in 1968. After that, the SCLC began to focus its efforts on ending American involvement in the Vietnam War. I chaired the Spring Mobilization Committee to end the war in Vietnam. We recruited a large, diverse pool of members and led simultaneous anti-war marches in New York and San Francisco on April 15, 1967. In October 1967, I organized the March on the Pentagon, which became one of the largest anti-war marches of the 1960s, drawing tens of thousands of protesters and members of the growing counterculture movement. I largely retired from the civil rights movement after Dr. King's death in 1968. In the 1980s, I expressed support for conservative politicians like Ronald Reagan and Lyndon LaRouche. In 1995, however, I came out of retirement to organize the Million Man March on Washington, D.C. with Louis Farrakhan. That was the last event I organized in my life. I passed away on December 19, 2008, of pancreatic cancer. I was laid to rest in Utah, Alabama. Even though I may not be there to see it, my legacy still carries on. I was even part of the movie Selma, 
Bro is portrayed by hip-hop artist Common.